Reacting to stress. The interviewer must remain cool and calm during an employee's outbursts, apologize when appropriate without retreating unnecessarily, and maintain composure and perspective. Obtain information. The interviewer must ask appropriate questions, probe to ensure that meaningful issues are discussed, and should seek meaningful information. The interviewer should focus on a limited number of topics so that each topic can be discussed comprehensively. Work goals should be reviewed and attainable objectives should be set. Provide feedback. The focus should be on facts rather than opinions and evidence should be available to document the claims. The manager should open with specific positive remarks, be specific regarding performance shortcomings, and orient the discussion to performance comments, not personal criticisms. The manager should guard against overwhelming the employee with information. Too much information can be confusing, while too little information can be frustrating. Probably no more than one or two negative points should be brought up at one evaluation. The handling of negative comments is critical. They should be phrased specifically and be related to performance. Conclude with positive comments and total evaluation results. Resolve conflict. The interviewer should manage the conflict in the interview make appropriate commitments, and set realistic goals to ensure conflict resolution. Develop the employee. The interviewer should offer to help the employee develop his or her career plans, specify development needs, and recommend sound developmental actions. Motivate the employee. The interviewer should provide incentives for the employee to stay with the organization and perform effectively, provide commitments to the employee to encourage high performance levels, and support the employee's excellent performance. Meyer describes three generally used approaches to these interview situations, tell and sell, tell and listen, and problem solving. The tell and sell approach is best for new and inexperienced employees, while the problem solving approach which encourages employee participation, is useful for more experienced employees. Performance Management In the past, organizations focused on performance appraisal. Currently, the focus is shifting to performance management. Performance management is a planned systematic management system, which can be divided into a few integrated subsystems, directed at the improvement of individual, group, and organizational effectiveness. The subsystems include the determination of performance objectives and standards, performance measurement, feedback, and development of employees. Performance management starts with the question, which performance must be managed? This has to do with where and what the organization wants to be and what it wants to achieve in the coming years. The long-term strategic plan is used to select the specific goals of the organization and the behavior that should be reinforced and rewarded to achieve these goals. Performance objectives linked to the business plan should be decided for each department and individual. Performance must be managed to bring the gap between the current position, as shown by diagnosis, and desired position, as shown by strategic plan, through the management of resistance to change. Coaching and feedback from part of the performance management. Feedback and coaching result in improved supervisor and employee relationships, increased commitment to the organization, and reduced intentions to quit. Activity 11.2 Forced Ranking Friend or Foe Jack Welsh, retired Chief Executive Officer of General Electric, is associated with forced ranking. GE annually used this performance management tool to eliminate the bottom 10% of employees that were rated as poor 
or low performance by means of the force ranking system. Force ranking systems are performance evaluation programs under which managers rank employees against each other, and they use the rankings to determine who receives raises, rewards, bonuses, promotions, and in some instances, who is terminated. Predetermined percentages of employees are forced into categories, sometimes designated by letter grades such as A, B, and C. In order cases, the categories are numerical, and in others there are labels such as superior and needs improvement. The distribution typically follows a bell-shaped curve with 10 or 20% in the top category, 70 or 80% in the middle, and 10% in the bottom. The top-ranked employees are considered high-potential employees and are often targeted for a more rapid career path and leadership development programs. In stark contrast, those ranked at the bottom are denied bonuses and increases. They may be given a probationary period to improve their performance, but are often terminated if they fail to show improvement. Fans of forced rankings argue that ranking employees enables companies to reward top performers, eliminate unproductive workers, and raise the overall level of productivity. On the other hand, its critics assert that forced ranking creates an overly competitive workplace where employees' cooperation and teamwork are replaced with ruthless competition to outrank and outlast co-workers. The AARP argues that one of the most common criticisms of forced ranking systems is that the criteria used to rank employees are not objective and consequently are subject to bias. The forced ranking systems adopted by Ford, Goodyear, General Electric, Canaco, Microsoft, Capital One, and Sprint all have been challenged as being designed to get rid of workers on specific race, age, or gender rather than poor performers. Debate the pros and cons of forced ranking as a performance evaluation system. Which ethical challenges might be inflicted by this method? For more opinions and information, visit www.aarp.org forward slash money forward slash careers forward slash employee resource center forward slash law forward slash forced underscore ranking AARP www.businessweek.com forward slash careers forward slash content forward slash Feb 2007 forward slash CA 20070 212 underscore 272450 dot htm. Summary Performance appraisal is a human resource management activity that is used to determine the extent to which an employee is performing the job effectively. A well-designed performance appraisal system can serve various purposes, namely developmental, reward, motivational, human resource planning, communication, and human resource management research purposes. The successful implementation of performance appraisal is affected by the philosophy and strategy of management. Performance criteria and standards, the way in which the system is established, the METS is used to appraise performance, the link between rewards and performance, and the training of appraisers. Training in performance management and appraisal is essential for all managers and supervisors. Trained raters are more accurate than untrained raters. Supervisors, peers, subordinates, and the employees themselves could be involved in the appraisal. It is a demotivating experience for an employee to receive an unexpected negative appraisal rating. It seems that interview effectiveness will increase when the interview is approached in a problem-solving manner. 
Participation by the employee is one of the most important factors influencing the success thereof. Performance appraisal should not be viewed as a once-a-year completion of rating forms. The manager should hold an appraisal interview with each subordinate to discuss his or her appraisal and to set objectives for the upcoming appraisal period. Employee development and salary action discussions should not occur in the same interview. Performance management is a planned, systematic management system that can be divided into a few integrated subsystems directed at the improvement of individual, group, and organizational effectiveness. The subsystems include the determination of performance objectives and standards, performance measurement, feedback, and development of employees. Coaching and feedback form part of performance management. Key concepts and terms. Appraiser training. Behavioral criteria, behavioral rating skill, central tendency, checklist, coaching, direct index method, first impression, force distribution, graphic rating scale, halo effect, management by objectives, output criteria, paired comparison ranking, peer appraisal, Performance Appraisal Performance Appraisal Interview Performance Criteria Performance Management Rating Errors Recency Effects Self-Appraisal Simple Ranking Strict Rating Subordinate Appraisal Supervisory Appraisal Trait Criteria Sample essay titles. What are the content and methodology of a training program in performance appraisal for managers? What are the advantages and disadvantages of the different performance appraisal methods? Which method could be used for the appraisal of performance of sales staff? 